I don't guys important message today deception alert Pope Francis and the global agenda of Rome if you've been uh, listening to these videos you know I am a former Roman Catholic and what I'm doing in this new series I'm uh, gleaning from my uh, soul refuge blog okay you find that over at soulrefuge.org and um there are articles many many articles folks that go back to 2007 but they're still uh, still for today. That's the best way I could put it. So, folks, there is a global agenda. You know, there's a, there's a call for religious unity that's been going on for, uh, for quite a while now. This inter-religious unity uh, movement, it's being propagated by the Roman Catholic system. You know, I, I speak as a former Roman Catholic. For, for you who have not heard any of uh, these messages, uh, that's why I keep repeating that. So uh, I'm speaking uh, from experience here. I came out of that religious system. I'm here to tell you today it's it's a different gospel. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. They preach another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. So uh, when I was truly saved and born again of the spirit, I knew by the spirit of truth, by the spirit of the living God that that I was deceived up until that point, and then I obviously got saved. And, you know, I remember I had a mental picture of all the relig religious vestments that the uh, Roman Catholic priests and bishops wore, uh, and I instantly knew that they were nothing more than religious costumes being worn by men who were deceived themselves. I'm telling you, that's the way it happened to me, folks. And, and all of a sudden, you have this information. How? By the Spirit of the living God, all right? Uh, not by going to some seminary for years and years. No, when the Holy Ghost comes, folks, uh, you're, 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 you're regenerated by the power of, of the Holy Ghost, folks. And, and, and I encourage you, it doesn't matter, folks, who you are. I don't care what color, what race, you're black, you're white, you're Chinese, you're Korean, you're Russian, you're, you're Jewish. It doesn't matter, folks. You must be born again. That's the word uh, for you today. Uh, Romans 10 verses 11 to 13 for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved you know I encourage you to read that again Romans 10 11 to 13 uh, get yourself a Bible open it up and, and pray and call upon the Lord. Say, Lord, you know, folks, you can talk to the Lord the, the way you talk to a good friend. And you know what's going on in your heart. And talk to him, say, Lord, hey, Lord, I, I know I'm a wretch. I need mercy. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. You know, we're, we're dealing with serious stuff, folks. And the reason I'm doing these videos, folks, is, is that I want to see you saved. I want to see your relatives saved, your friends saved. So that's a powerful, powerful uh word there and it was written by uh, the jewish apostle paul and that man well you know i've said many times he was deceived he persecuted christians consented unto the death of many of those christians then he got saved for real now the jewish i mean i'm sorry the jesus christ of the roman catholic system He's brought down to their Roman Catholic altars on a daily basis to be sacrificed in their sacrifice of the Mass. And they believe that that sacrifice of the Mass expiates the sins, listen to this, of both the living and the dead souls. Okay? So, 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 so the living and the dead souls, we're in purgatory. They believe in this place called purgatory. Folks, many are deceived. I remember I was deceived by that teaching of purgatory. Lord, have mercy. You're praying for your relatives. You're praying for your, your friends who, who, who died. And, and, and you go to get a mass set. You get a mass card. And you, 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 you want a mass. You hope that they get out, you know, that they're not going to suffer for a long time in this place called purgatory. When I got saved, I realized, I, I knew instantly, that place was a complete fraud. And when you think, folks, you know, people make donations. In the 1960s, folks, you could get a, a mass card, you uh, uh, a dollar mass cut or a five dollar one a suggested donation. I like the five dollar one. Is that nice case it came with? Nice colorful picture, and you'd be praying. You, you know, you you bring that mass card to the to the wake, and they had the, they would have a stand where where they would place those mass cards in it, and you'd go and you kneel down before the the coffin, the casket, and you pray for the people, and you hope and. You, you, 
But when I got saved, folks, I realized instantly there was no purgatory. The Holy Ghost showed me that, folks. It's heaven or hell. So, so, so can you imagine over the past who, how many centuries that, that people, the billions of dollars that the, the donations are made, and to this day that still goes on, people still have masses said for their loved ones. It, it is mind-blowing. And once again, the mouths are zipped within the evangelical churches warning against these things. They powwow with, with these people. They don't say a thing uh, about this, folks. Uh, it, it's amazing to me. So there, there, there's a, you know, it's a real bondage, folks. And, and, and may I also say this, if you do not agree with the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, many people don't understand uh, that this, this is really true. There are over 100 anathemas, better called curses, uh, upon the books of the Roman Catholic system. These were instituted at the Roman Catholic Council of Trent. Now, the Council of Trent was basically a response to what is known as the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation people were getting saved for real. They were fighting against the Roman Catholic system. So here's the Council of Trent. And those curses, over 100, as I said, were instituted at that uh, Council of Trent. You say, well, that's old stuff. Yeah, well, it was old stuff, but it was, it was upheld by the Council of Vatican II, which took place in 1964 to 65, folks. So those those curses are still on the books. And, and they come against people who do not agree with their teaching on the Mass and their host and the consecrated host and all of that stuff, folks. It's incredible. You're, I'm under all of them, and I praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Because I know that the Lord saved my soul. And I'm warning you once again, folks, uh, about this this inter-religious unity, okay? Now, I, I want you to see something, folks. There was a statement that came out uh, in Va from Vatican City on October 28th in 2015. This is from the uh, Vatican Information uh, Service. Let, let me just read this to you. The Pope also noted that over the last 50 years, there have been many initiatives and examples of institutional or personal relations with non-Christian religions. The most significant among them include the meeting in Assisi on 27 October 1986, promoted by St. John Paul II. He also praised the great transformation that has taken place in this period in the relationship between Christians and Jews. Indifference and opposition have turned into cooperation and benevolence, he remarked. From enemies and strangers, we've become friends and brothers. Uh-oh, red flag right there. The council with the declaration Nostra Aetate, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, showed the way, yes, to the rediscovery of the Jewish roots of Christianity, no to any form of anti-Semitism and condemnation of any resultant injustice, discrimination, and persecution. Mutual knowledge, respect, and esteem constitute the way that valid for relations with Jews is similar, similarly relevant to relations with other religions. I think in particular of Muslims who, as the council states, adore the one God living and subsisting in himself, merciful and all-powerful, the creator of heaven and earth, who has spoken to men. They refer to the paternity of Abraham. They venerate Jesus as a prophet. Watch that. They honor his virgin mother Mary. They await the day of judgment and practice prayer, charity, and fasting. So that was the interreligious religious audience in St. Peter's Square on the 50th anniversary of the Concilia Declaration Nostra Etet in Vatican City, 28 October 2015. Folks, uh, this is serious stuff. Once again, this is an unsaved man, by the way. Pope Francis, he needs to get saved. He needs to be born again. If he was truly born again of the Spirit, he wouldn't talk that way. Because when you are truly born again of the Spirit, you know without, beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the only way. Okay, And he, brought, uh, he spoke about a meeting that took place in Assisi, Italy. That was 1986. That's when Pope John Paul II gathered uh, the, the 12 major religions and all sorts of other people were there, witch doctors, and, and they were all praying together, by the way. Uh, totally amazing stuff. Totally amazing stuff. So I remember seeing uh, videos, you know, uh, you can still see them on YouTube. There, there were all sorts of religions, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, uh, Hinduism, witch doctors, and so on. And 
so forth. So l- listen to what Jesus, I mean, listen, listen to what the Lord, this is Old Testament I'm reading, this is what it is, Christ. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Okay? So if you notice, the Lord declared himself to be the King of Israel and the first and the last. Okay? Beside him, there is no God. Uh, you, you, folks, you can go to the New Testament. You'll see in Revelation chapter 1 where, where Jesus Christ, the ascended Christ, referred to himself as the first and the last. So uh, I, I want you to see where we're heading here because it's very, very important. You know, if, if you look at Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night, Unto Berea, who come into the went into the synagogue of the Jews, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So that's what I encourage you to do, folks. Search the scriptures, because the scriptures, the word of God, that's what is going to judge you one day, ladies and gentlemen. So. Uh, I got to bring that out, folks, to you. John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God in spirit and in truth without the Holy Spirit, by the way. If you've never been regenerated, never been born again, it's impossible. So, so that's the word for you today. You must be born again. Folks, you must be born again. The Holy Ghost must be inside, okay? Otherwise, it's impossible to worship God in spirit and in truth. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Powerful, powerful words. So, let me just take another piece of what the Pope spoke. I want you to see something here. This is what he says. I think in particular of Muslims, who as the council states, adore the one God, living in and subsisting in himself, merciful and all-powerful, the creator of heaven and earth, who has spoken to men. They refer to the paternity of Abraham. They venerate Jesus as a prophet. They honor his virgin mother Mary. They await the day of judgment and practice prayer, charity, and fasting. Now, it, it sounds good, doesn't it? But, but, but there's something drastically wrong there, folks. Look, they venerate Jesus as a prophet. Folks, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is equal to God Almighty. Jesus Christ is God. He's more than a prophet. It says they honor the Virgin Mother Mary. Did you know that the, the people of Islam do not even believe that God has a son? Isn't that interesting? So, so uh, the question of the hour is this. Do the words of Pope Francis agree with what the scriptures teach, which included the words of Jesus Christ, or is the pagan Pope Francis teaching things from his own distorted mind? The scriptures teach us that eternal life is found in the Son, not a prophet. There's a great conflict between biblical Christianity and the religion of Islam. And that difference is the difference between life and death, truth and error, and ultimately heaven and hell. How can a person have eternal life if it is found in the Son of God when the people of Islam do not even believe that God has a son? Let me give you some quotes from the Quran of Islam. Don't ever forget what you're about to hear, folks. Here's one of the quotes. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than God's apostle. God is but one God. God forbid that he should have a son. That's on 4, colon, 171, whatever. You know, I don't read the Quran, so that's, that's the way it's listed. No, no, no. Let me stop right there. Did you hear what they say, folks, in their Quran? God forbid that he should have a son. No, no you see where I'm heading here? You're talking about having unity? Impossible. You'd be betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'll say it again. You have unity with that system of Islam. You're betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. They declare Jesus Christ to be nothing more than a prophet. Blasphemy. Next quote from their Quran. Those who say the Lord of mercy has begotten a son preach a monstrous falsehood at which the very heavens might crack. What? What? Next quote. God forbid that he himself should beget a son. Next quote. Praise be to God who has never begotten a son, who has no partner in his kingdom. Next quote. God has begotten a son? God forbid. Self-sufficient is he. Last quote. If the Lord of mercy had a son, I would be the first to worship him. So folks, do, uh, do you see what I'm saying? Beware. See, see, see this, this, this whole interreligious unity, the brotherhood of man, that's what's taking place. People are being seduced. And, and what you would call the evangelical churches, it's like a zipper is upon their mouths. They say nothing, nothing, nothing. And when the Pope comes to town, they say nothing. The Pope came into town, into New York City. They had this eight-foot fence built, folks, uh, in, in near Central Park. I mean, this wasn't a cheap fence, one of those cheap orange plastic things. This was quality for a man to come into town. Can you imagine the millions of dollars in overtime and people bow down at that man's feet? The man needs to get saved. The man needs to get saved, folks. It's called deception. Don't ever forget these scriptures, folks. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Folks, did you hear what I just said, eternal life, folks, is found in the sun, nowhere else. So the people of Islam do not even believe that God has the sun. Do you, do you see the atrocity of seeking a unity there? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. I said before, I'll say it again, you join hands in unity with that system. It's a betrayal of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's a betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a betrayal of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to this, John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Folks, if you believe Jesus Christ is nothing but a prophet, you don't believe that, that he's the son of God. The scriptures tell us the wrath of God is abiding upon you if you, believe, if you don't believe that God is the son. If you don't believe in him, you're not trusting in him. You don't understand the gospel at all. So that is something that you need to understand. Listen to this First John 5, 20. And we know that the son of God has come and hath given us and understand that, that we may know him. That is true. And that we are in him. That is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Powerful. Don't the scriptures minister? I mean, I read this, folks. It ministers to me many times. Uh, over and over, you feel the power because the power is in the word of God. Oh, yes. You know, I've, I've told people, you know, you know, I used to minister on the subway. Sometimes I'd be preaching the word. You know, none of us are exempt from this, uh, this word, folks. Uh, sometimes I'd be preaching the word to other people, but the, the word is so powerful. Sometimes I just wanted to sit down and say, Lord have mercy, because the, the power of the word would just hit you. You see? 
because we're, we're just people. But God is God and his word is powerful. The anointing of the, of the spirit of the living God upon his word. And I've heard other preachers, street preachers, preach his power in the scriptures, folks. Power. Such power. Look at this, folks. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us, unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high glory to God. God spoke by the prophets, now he speaks by the Son. How can you listen to God if you don't even believe he has the Son as the people of Islam uh, say, folks? So, you know, I, I'm going to, I want you to look up some of these scriptures here. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to, to 36. That's when Moses and Elijah appeared in glory and spoke to the Lord. That was uh, up on the Mount of uh, Transfiguration. And so there's much, much stuff here in that blog post, soulrefuge.org, uh, regarding that. I wanted to get the main point, folks, of, of, um, the false unity. And you, there's just so much information, folks, and, and that's what I really wanted to stress uh, to you. Let me just put these uh, last two scriptures here for you. First uh, John 4, 9 to 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The word propitiation, it's mercy seat, folks. Jesus Christ is the mercy seat. He's the one you need, folks. Acts 4, 10 to 12, don't ever forget this. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's so powerful, folks. Clear, clearer than clear. He's, he's talking to the people of Israel, folks, and says, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead. There was a man that was healed, and the religious Jewish people wanted to know, by what power? How, how was this man healed? And, and here's Peter's big moment. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Here's Peter's big moment. He came through, and, and he says, you, know, you want to know how this man was healed? You see? By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. That's powerful. And this was the stone. This is a, he was the fulfillment of a prophecy from the Old Testament. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, speaking of Christ being rejected by his own Jewish people. And now he's become the head of the corner. He's the chief cornerstone, folks. It's a spiritual temple. And I like this. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Folks, don't ever forget that. If you don't know the Lord, if you've never been saved through Jesus Christ, you, you know, when you've been born again, folks, you know when you're born again, how can you not when the Spirit of God comes inside, okay? Uh, there's no other way. There's no other name by which you can be saved unless you come through Christ. He is the Son of God. The people of Judaism, folks, you go to Israel, folks, they have the same attitude toward Jesus Christ today as they did 2,000 years ago. That's the God honest truth. There's a small, small, tiny remnant of what they would call Messianic uh, Jewish people that do have come to Christ. They've been born again of the Spirit. Uh, folks, when you're born again, you, you become part of the kingdom of God, whether you're Jewish or Gentile. But there's no other way except through Christ. In other words, if you're Jewish and you reject Christ, you're not in his kingdom. I don't care what anybody else is telling you. It's impossible. You come into the kingdom through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Okay? So that, there's no 
other way. There's no other name by which you can be saved. And let me say something to you folks. You're still trying to get to heaven by, by being a good person, doing the best you can, trying to keep the law the best you can. Hear me now. Come to the place where you realize the wages of sin is death. There's, there's no amount of good works, folks. There are none righteous, not even one. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. All your own righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of Almighty God. And it's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what justifies you. You've got to come to the place and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I'm a wretch. Now, that's when the Lord's going to meet you, folks. No, you can go to church week after week after week after week and still not know the Lord. Never been born again. And, and I'm going to leave it right there. Remember, it's the cross, folks. And, and this false unity, this global agenda of Rome, run from it. If your pastor's not speaking out, and you can ask him if you see he's joining hands with Rome, and it's happening everywhere. F folks, take off. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I'm going to stop right there. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ.